Hey, what's up everybody? David Burns here, Certified Master Beekeeper. And it's spring of 2018. It's a nice warm day here in Central Illinois. It's only topping out at about 50 degrees. And it's been a while since I've been with you guys. I've been busy making videos for uh, a lot of other services that I offer to beekeepers. And uh, it's good to be back, be back with you and uh, jump in a hive with you. Uh, this is an interesting hive. It went through the winter in a single deep. Didn't have much honey in there. I really was using it for like a little mating uh, deep just to raise some queens, like a mating nook. But it survived the winter and I didn't even know it had a queen. It kind of went queenless there at the end. I didn't have time to combine it with other hives. A few weeks ago I looked into it and it had a queen. Everything was uh, purring along but they didn't have any food at all. So I started feeding them with my Burns Bees feeding system and that really gave them a, a shot in the arm. I'm learning a lot about beekeeping. That's, uh, uh, I guess it's something that I probably have always known, but it's just recently dawned on me to, to impact me the way that it has, and it's a new paradigm in beekeeping. And this new paradigm is awesome. We get caught up in the old paradigm of stuff. We do things kind of the way we've always done it, even though bees aren't doing things the way they've always done because of of new introduction of pesticides, neonics, uh, uh, because of the introduction of varroa mites and other challenges in beekeeping. Um, there's less forage out there for bees than there used to be and so bees are stressed and this stress is causing a lot of problems with bees. So we have to really create a new paradigm in how we keep bees and that's where people are failing to realize they need to do something differently. So I hope to continue to teach this in my classes tomorrow, which is Saturday. I know you'll be watching this at different times, but I've got two classes back to back. I start off the day with a beginner's class, and then I've got a spring class on the second half of the day. So I've got my work cut out for me. Also, I've been speaking around the country. I've had a ball. Speak. I started off speaking down in, in uh, Mississippi with Dr. Jeff Harris. That was a lot of fun down there and the people treated me so good and I had some great talks down there and I really appreciate the reaction that that people had at, at what I was presenting and then I was at Arkansas a big conference at Harding University with uh, John Zavishlock and we had a ball down there again great group of people exciting beekeepers getting some good information and then last weekend I was up at Wisconsin North Central Technical College and I, I had a just a uh, unbelievable good time they they asked me to be the keynote speaker and uh, assigned me the task of two keynote talks that were about an hour and a half long on bee nutrition and the research that i put into getting those talks ready really enlightened me about the urgency of feeding bees not just sugar water bees can actually do worse studies have shown if we just feed them sugar water that's why it's so important that beekeepers change the paradigm in what they've been thinking but there's so much wrong information out there so much false information that's getting repeated at bee clubs and all this you know oh it's hard to correct so we'll keep trying <laughs> so it's been fun i've had a i've had a whirlwind tour of speaking engagements and uh, now it's getting warm enough to uh, open up some hives technically today it's really not warm enough it's only topping out at about 50. But I'm against a wall behind me. There's not much wind right now at all. The sun's hitting me. I can get by with opening this hive up and taking a look. What I want to look at today is I want to see how much sugar water uh, they've really been putting in the comb. In other words, they have been drinking about a quart a day. And so I want to see are they using it just to survive or are they using it to put it into their comb and feed larvae. So that's what I'm going to look into today. Also, one more thing I want to share with you, even though it's really nice today, there's a storm coming. <laughs> That's a bad thing about living in Illinois. You get a day like this, tomorrow we might have six inches of snow. That's what they're predicting. And cold temperatures and ice and all. So you think, oh wow, we've made it out of winter, everything's warm, the bees are flying. Well, they've still got a long way to go. A lot of beekeepers will begin losing hives right now. Now before I open this hive, let me show you one more thing that I think you'll find interesting. One of the ways that I like to feed bees is by feeding them pollen direct 
pollen that just I lay uh, pollen out on a board like this and as you can see bees just love it this is just pollen powder look at that and the bees are going crazy over it this is a great way to feed colonies all right let's open up a hive so as we see here today in the hive we are going to notice that I've been feeding them some sugar water that I've also included this is the new paradigm in beekeeping is what you're feeding in your liquid sugar uh, I know a lot of you are going to be asking me what this is what do I put in it I've told you before I had a lot of protein and I'm feeding them through my feeding systems and as you can see once you start feeding bees like this they really can build up fast in the spring and that's critical for making splits Now it can be a little tricky working bees first thing in the spring on a day when they're not really foraging much. Again, this is a smaller uh, hive that, uh, look at that, wow, they're just, these are bees that are really wanting all that food that I'm giving them. So I'm just a little curious, what does this hive look like? It's technically in Illinois, we've gone through a, a pretty Decent winter, hasn't been too bad, but uh, it was a hard winter a uh, few weeks. Okay, they have stored some. I see some glistening nectar in this frame. And if, it'd be fun to, uh, for us to see the queen together and see what kind of brood we might have. Now these cells here are, they've been polished. In other words, these bees want the queen to lay here. Let me see if I can open up a little bit and show it to you. And you can see, this is what I'm talking about. This is ready for the queen to lay in there. They've polished them out and cleaned them up really good for her. But I don't see anything yet. I want to find the queen. I want to see what evidence we have of any kind of larva. Eggs, larva. This frame appears to have a little cat brood on it. Let me see. Here's the cat brood that you can see here. So the queen was here at least eight days ago. Make sure she's not on this frame. She could be. Now I do see other larva, not much, but I do see a little bit of larva down on the base of these cells that's about six or seven days old. This frame is heavy, so it probably has more nectar being stored in it. The bees are really keeping the brood warm. The cat brood is pupa, and the pupa does have to be kept about 90 to 93 degrees, and they're all just really on top of it, keeping it warm. I wouldn't ordinarily open this up, except I just want to kind of take a look at things. All right, here's a waggle dance right here. She's telling them where this pollen and nectar source is. That's what you call a waggle dance. They're all kind of following her around, looking at her. Trying to memorize how far to fly. Now I don't see the queen. Let's take a quick look. Nope. Let's see about this side again. The queens are often hard to find because of the bees being all clumped together. But right here is the queen. Somewhere, I just saw her right here. There she is. Because it's cold. I mean, it's 50 degrees. They have to keep the brood warm. But there she goes walking across here. 
So maybe I'll look, see if I see some eggs. I do. There's eggs in the cells. Here's a queen up there. Alright, I've seen enough. This is fun. The bees are doing good. So I'm going to put the uh, Burns feeding system back on and feed the bees and wrap it up. Okay, everybody, so just remember, don't get in your hives too early. You'll freeze the, uh, you'll chill the brood. Uh, be, be careful about that. If you kill the queen, their queens are hard to find this time of the year. Uh, also, the big thing is just feed and feed and feed. Pollen patties, it really isn't what you need to do right now. You need to get protein. Um, I like uh, doing what I showed you on putting powder, uh, pollen powder. I use pollen substitute powder. I lay it out on a board on a nice day like today and you can see bees are going crazy packing it into their back legs. I love to watch them do that. A lot of fun. You can add it to your sugar water and um, I'm looking forward to teaching my, my first spring management class tomorrow for the year and I'll be explaining to them how to use that protein in their sugar water to get that proventricular valve to pull that protein back into the second gut is key on getting these bees going. A lot of people just don't understand that. It's way too, it's way too easy to figure out, but people are just, again, they're, they're buying into old wives' tales and they're just keeping outdated material circulating and we need to be more proactive and changing the paradigm in beekeeping. Hey, also I wanna tell you, if you wanna learn more about uh, these things that I'm, I'm sharing and I'm teaching, I have actually put my, all my classes I teach not only do I teach them here in our training center, but I also have them available online. So now you can go to our website at honeybeesonline.com, click on the Online Beekeeping Academy, and then you can select from basic classes, spring management classes, queen rearing, advanced beekeeping, how to get your bees through the winter, a lot more. And you can, you can take these classes of mine with me teaching you and showing you real video of what to do on these online classes. I think you'll really enjoy them. We've had hundreds of people that have gotten on board to this beekeeping academy. So I'd like to, I'd like to teach you these things that I'm, I'm learning and I'm, I'm really excited about. Okay, everybody, hey, good to be with you again. I'm not gonna stay away so long next time. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Take care.